I never really thought of myself as an ambitious person, um, but I think that has kind of changed the older I've got and the different jobs that I've come into. Because I think, you know, we've always kind of looked at ambition or uh, being, at, at, uh, you know, at, being ambitious is quite a negative thing in, in New Zealand, or at least it seemed to be where I grew up. And um, so I think ambition now means, um, I guess, the ability to strive or wanting to strive is probably how that means to me now. So it's not, you're not looking backward, you're always trying to take a step forward in whatever thing that you're doing. So you would describe yourself as ambitious now, but not before? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's quite interesting. Yeah, I grew up in definitely, I grew up in Blenheim, which had, you know, as an example, had two high schools. There was Marlborough Girls High School and Marlborough Boys High School. So you kind of, you, you didn't want to stick out and I stuck out like a very sore thumb. So, you know, it was kind of, you know, you didn't, you didn't want to be ambitious. You wanted to be like the same as everybody else because everybody else was doing the same track and wearing the same clothes and doing the same thing and wanting to do the same thing at the universities and, and that kind of thing. And if you kind of wanted a different trajectory, you were kind of squished down quite quickly. Yeah, I definitely have changed my tune. And, and, and I think, yeah, London probably made some really good positive changes for me. And made me realise that I could step up and do amazing things and, and, and kind of was able to break off some of those Kiwi attitudes and shackles maybe to, um, to really push myself to be more ambitious. And, you know, if I think about that too in my relationship, um, I'm the per person who kind of pushes my husband. He's not the one who's looking at the next role. It's me going, <laughs> it's actually me going, what's next for you, Dan, rather than, than him thinking of it. I think that when I went to London, that was that that whole that you can be whoever you want to be and no one kind of cares. Um, I think, yeah, I just really seemed to blossom in that kind of perspective and viewpoint. And a lot of people who are in urban centres like Auckland now don't have any idea what regional New Zealand is actually like. And... Um, you know, you see it in some of the, like in the campaigns, like I always think of it as like, like the end to racism or, or what was bubbling around after the Christchurch attacks and what urban New Zealand thought New Zealand was like and what regional New Zealand actually is are so polar opposite. Watching the Trump era, era come up in the US and things, you know, people don't realise there's potential for some of that in New Zealand. So who is the most ambitious person that you know? It's quite funny. He's a guy called Sam Hawkey, who was an account executive at um, Glow Isobar, where I worked in London. And you, you could see that he was like really cracking to be like an account manager. Um, Sam Hawkey is now the C, uh, CEO of Saatchi and Saatchi London. And you could see even in his really, like, ugh, like you know, we were his first job out of uni that wasn't like a wee internship, but you could just see in this young guy that he was, again, like going to take over the world. And it was really interesting, like about four months ago when, she, when he got the CEO role, um, you know, there was still a, a random glue ice of our chat group that I was in on Facebook that no one had used for about three or four years and then bang he gets this role and everyone's like whoa Hawkey you're doing so well and like you know all these old jokes came in but yeah it's just amazing to watch someone from such a lower level to like be able to grasp that in such a, a short amount of time and being able to recognize it from when he was such a such a spring chicken what kind of things did you see in that spring chicken? I mean, what was it that said to you, this is someone who's going places? Um, he, he just, you know, the, I, love the, I love the New Zealand phrase, doing the mahi, because mm -hmm. I feel that it's more than just doing the work. Like, it was, you know, there's doing the work, right? But there's also other stuff, that, other skills, like how to really actively listen, how to, how to, um, in a work sense, be able to take in kind of a bigger picture. I think that's something that people who are really ambitious are not just going, this is my thing, so therefore when I'm having a meeting with you one-on-one, -on -one, this is the meeting. They're able to kind of go, okay, this is the wider context. And this might be the pressures of what you're thinking of about why you're telling me in this way, but we need to think about rather than just this one-to-one -one interaction, what are the other wider contexts around it? And I think that's one thing that people who are, yeah, ambitious are able to kind of be able to see the 
so be able to see the bigger picture. And also, I think there's two different sides where actually while we're talking through it, there's, there's ambition and there's ego. And I feel that they're two very different things. And I feel to be ambitious, you are aware of your ego, but you understand that it's not the be all and end all. And that allows you to see the wider picture rather than just the whole, this is my, you know, this is my focus for this interaction. Yeah, you're really able to see the much bigger picture. If I asked you if there was anything that would enable you to be more ambitious, what would you say? I think, um, yeah, it's really interesting. I think there's lots of different steps to it. I think, I think an understanding of ambition, like even right back to kind of school and curriculum and that kind of thing, um, there's no chat about that. There's no, there's no, you know, people always talk about what's your career going to be in right. They don't, they don't, they so look at it. It's such a singular track rather than kind of like how to expand, you know, how to, I guess that's some of the university thing is, is you learn how to learn, but do you learn how to, how to put yourself forward? Um, I haven't done any kind of, kind of, you know, networking kind of career coaching thing, but I definitely think, um, you know, that would be beneficial to me is to, because if you're not around, if, and I know that it's, it's, um, it's always difficult to, go, to say, but it's so important to be around inspiring women who are open. And, and I hate that, you know, it's 2020 and we still have to say that, right? But if you're not around inspiring, ambitious women, you don't learn how to be an inspiring, ambitious woman because you, you don't see that behavior that, you that you'd like to model. And I think, yeah, that's a big thing for me is, is, is seeing more ambitious women will make us all more ambitious, I think, because some, you see a lot of ambitious men. Um, what did we used to say? I always used to find it really funny is that, that um, men are always, uh, men are put into a job to grow, but women have to do the job before they get the job. And I think that's always that different mindset that we need to break. But I've so seen it throughout my career and it always ticks me off. But yeah, 100% seeing more ambitious women to learn from would 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 absolutely help me be more ambitious and 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 channel it in the in the right ways. I was really nervous about coming back to work after having kids because um, I loved being at home, but it's been so nice to be able to use my brain again. And I think what I really like about here is I call it the onion because it's just every time there's a, you, you lift another layer and there's something else and it's really interesting. And I think it just really fits this, the role fits my personality really well. It's a bit strategy. It's a bit creative. It's a bit this, and I've got scope to do this and I've got scope to grow and I've got, um, I can, you know, create change and deliver impact, which, you know, is, are things that are really important to me personally. So I feel that it like, of all the roles that I kind of looked at, this has landed in such a wonderful place for me. I'm really, and I'm really enjoying it. And it's a challenge. It's not easy. And, and, and I think that's important too, because if you're not challenged, you know, in a work sense, you know, home's really challenging, don't get me wrong. But if you're not challenged in a work sense, I guess that's part of the ambition thing and probably a recognition of why I'm ambitious is, is I strive for roles that are going to be a challenge. Uh, there's a really interesting, I don't know if you've had a look on TRA, the, the research agency. Um, they've got their New Zealand cultural codes and they've got a bit about um, that whole not sticking out too much. I've always, I found that really interesting to read a wee while back, which is basically why, why, we, why New Zealand loves and is so protective of Lord as an example, you know, because she's so self-deprecating and, and, and didn't like stick herself up to be this big mega pop star. She's just kind of who she is and, and very Kiwi in her approach and that's why we love her. And why we had, you know, why that, you know, if she wasn't like that, we'd have a tendency to like pat her back down, you know, it's, it's awful. It's, it's not a good thing. 